Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and this afternoon I want to take a quick look, a brief look, all about medieval pilgrimages and it's interesting because people went on them or were drawn to do it for several reasons really. Sometimes it was down to the fact that a person felt they had done something wrong and therefore needed some form of uh, purification of the body for example but not just the body but also of the mind sometimes people would go on them for reasons such as illness or sickness and we know for a fact that during uh, times of great plagues for example the black death people often used to go and walk on a pilgrimage basically or go on a pilgrimage to a nearby saint and it's quite interesting because the problem with people going on pilgrimages during times of plague for example uh, it actually made matters worse because obviously they were congregating in groups they were going to certain shrines certain churches certain holy places for example and they were actually spreading it because we know that during the black death when people went on a pilgrimage for example to take away the sickness it actually helped it spread from one place to another in a way it's the same reason why we've got this lockdown at the moment we need to stay in because therefore we're not going to spread it and as we know about COVID-19 now we know that people are often asymptomatic in other words you don't have the symptoms but you can actually be going around spreading it around so as we always say at the end of our videos stay in stay safe basically so imagine yourself as a medieval person maybe there is a plague or pestilence in the area maybe there is maybe there is famine or war and therefore you've decided to go on a pilgrimage now some people would go to their nearest church chapel or holy place and in the case of where we are in Worcester we could very easily walk down to Worcester Cathedral and in there we have two saints or did have two saints until the dissolution of the monasteries we had St Oswald and St Wollstone and both of those were bishops of Worcester that later on became saints and they had their own shrines in other words they had a large uh, reliquary in other words a, a very precious uh, container often holding items belonging to that saint maybe the saintly bones or maybe a piece of cloth or something like that um, most churches had more than one saint or most churches had more than one place you could go and see holy relics the problem is when you get to the dissolution most of them and i'm not saying all of them but most of them were either destroyed reburied and that type of thing so sadly we've lost most of them um in the case of worcester we don't know for example what happened to the bones or the uh, holy relics belonging to saint oswald and saint wollstone a lot of people think they were probably reburied in the high altar of the church we won't know basically but sadly they've all gone so imagine yourself as a person a medieval person and you feel that there is famine and pestilence in the area so you've gone on a pilgrimage and you've gone to your local place some people actually traveled further afield we know some people went to very popular shrines for example you might go to where thomas and beckett was killed and um, so therefore you would have a long journey to go there if you were starting from worcester for example other times people would actually go even further afield and go abroad and one of the most common places in the Middle Ages was a place called Compostela and a lot of people did that journey to Compostela and even today there is still a lot of people doing that journey not at the moment but will be doing that journey or have done that journey to Compostela in Spain. The ultimate place for a pilgrimage is obviously to the Holy Land itself, to places like Jerusalem or other things or other places and sites that are connected and mentioned in the Bible. But if you were going on a pilgrimage, you would often have to go and consult your local parish church. What you have to remember is years ago, we were tied to the land by the Lord and also by the church. So you did actually have to have permission. So if we were going further afield, you would go to the priest of your church. Remember, we were all Catholic in the Middle Ages, unless you were the small minority that was Jewish. And you would collect some form of paper given you permission to travel and this was a permit in a way and you would have to show it if you stopped off at different monasteries and so on because you have to remember the monasteries would look after you these holy places would look after you on your pilgrimage route so you need permission 
and most of the time you would carry nothing more than a small bag which held all your items that you required uh, not many things people were told really when you're going on a, a pilgrimage to travel light you don't want a, a huge amount of goods and chattels to be dragging around with you you need a, to lead a simple life basically on a pilgrimage and a lot of them also carried a stout staff and that was really down to the fact that you were traveling on very very poor quality roads may uh, you may be walking on an old uh, unused really roman road so it's in a, a poor state of repair or you could be walking on prehistoric trackways and in, in little lanes and things like that now in worcester cathedral in the 1980s archaeologists actually found uh, it was the remains of a human uh, being what is strange about that is it wasn't a standard uh, burial inside the cathedral so it's not a tomb burial it's not a proper burial it was a very hastily and secretive burial basically and that person was nicknamed long long ago as the Worcester Pilgrim and there are quite a few publications wrote about that pilgrim this is one here that was produced by Worcester Cathedral and this states the Worcester Pilgrim and it's got all sorts of information in there there is also a nice what we would now say if it was on television a dramatization of the pilgrim uh, from Worcester and that's this book called The Cockleshell Pilgrim and this is more of a medieval journey to Compostela and it's what we would say today if it was a film like I said um, would be a dramatization so there's a bit of fiction in there and also fact roll in together but when the pilgrim was found in Worcester Cathedral he had a number of items and this drawing shows what he was carrying or what he had with him and as you can see he's wearing a medieval hat quite a good hat actually to keep the sun off and also to keep the rain off in other poor weather conditions he's also wearing his woolen clothing a stout pair of boots which was very very important if you're walking long distances and he also has as you can see a stout staff which can be used to steady him when he's crossing rivers uh, and when he's crossing uneven ground as i said there was a lot of people traveling on the old Roman roads or uh, trackways and things like that so there's our pilgrim there so that is an illustration taken from these things that was found on him now the Worcester pilgrim uh, was found with lots and lots of bits and pieces on him including his boots and as I said uh, we know what they look like because there they are just there and when lockdown finishes do have a look at what was found with the pilgrim and you can find that by actually going down into the crypt and there is a, a little exhibition all about him there he's actually buried inside the nave of the cathedral today so you traveled relatively light really but when you got to the place where you were going to to prove that you'd actually been there pilgrims brought things back with them sometimes it could be something as simple as a seashell from the beach it was quite common to go to compostella and bring back for example a shell like we have here and this could be uh, picked up as a little trophy and brought home however some took it a little bit more uh, a little further we know that the worcester pilgrim actually came back with a cockle shell and this was perhaps sewn to his hat or in this case worn around the neck and what you will see with this cockle shad is we have a little hole at the bottom of it and if I show you the original that was found with our pilgrim you will see there a cockle shell with a hole in it and that proves that he's actually been to Compostela it was quite a common uh, badge really when you had visited now on my larger bag as I just showed you for carrying a small amount of food say I've got a seashell uh, a scallop shell actually held onto here to prove that I'm on a pilgrimage so anyone that sees uh, me walking down a lane for example uh, would identify me as a pilgrim but saying that some people some pilgrims actually brought back even more things some brought back with them a badge and these were relatively cheaply made they often made a stone um, mold and then poured lead into them and that lead badge could then be worn on clothing. This is one from Walsingham. And they often depict a picture of a famous um, 
piece of history to do with that saint. So you may have, for example, here where a knight was being attacked and then they were protected and uh, brought into the safety of the church, a miracle. And you would often have these displaying that miracle event on them. Uh, we also have one here, a general one for the Virgin Mary. So as you can see, they are little trinkets, little badges, and they were very cheap to manufacture. As I said, they were made out of lead, the original ones. Some could also bring back some holy water. And for that, you would have uh, a small bottle, a flask, basically. So here we have a small flask. This one came from Salisbury. Uh, and it's hollow and it would have been filled with holy water. We know the Thomas Beckett ones, they often used to say, had the blood and brain matter placed into them as well. And obviously you would take them home and they would look after you. They would keep you safe and they would keep illness away. As you can see, the top of this one is actually being crimped shut proving that this has now got the holy water or blood inside it. Um, Worcester, Worcester Cathedral, had a very similar pilgrim's badge. It was a circular thing uh, with a bottle and flask in the centre, all made out of lead, and this would have had holy water in. But most people, as I said, would have come back with nothing more than a little shout to prove that they'd actually been on that pilgrimage. In extreme cases, there were a lot of people out there selling all sorts of peculiarities, especially in the Holy Land. And for example, some people would bring back a nail, which was said to be part of uh, the crucifixion. So this would have been the nail that maybe held Christ on the cross. Some people also brought back relics of saints, for example, uh, a bone belonging to a saint, maybe a finger bone or a, a toe bone of a saint. And some even brought back ancient bits of wood, which they often used to say uh, came from the true cross. Obviously, quite amusing things that people brought back with them, but they were momentum. Some people actually say it's the first tourism badges that anyone ever picked up in history. And in a way, they are. We know if you go to a museum, for example, some people have um, uh, cloth badges that they collect. So they will get one of those and sew it onto a jacket, for example. Or you might go to, let's say, uh, Black Country Museum and come back with a little pin badge and you would wear it. Or when I was at school and we went on trips, for example, to Goodrich Castle, you'd buy a little badge, wear it and say, I've been to Goodrich Castle. Well, that's exactly the same as what these pilgrimage uh, momentums are, basically. So the pilgrim would go there. Uh, they would pray at the shrine, for example, and buy or even collect a momentum to bring back with them. And then they will get back and they will feel that their sins have been taken away or hopefully the plague or pestilence or famine on their farmland has completely gone because of it. It's quite an interesting thing and we would look at that today and think that is absolute madness. But you have to remember medieval people were very, very religious and they believed things happened for a reason. And that's why people did it, really. Anyway, hopefully this has been a brief introduction. And remember, we try to keep these videos 15 minutes. Uh, if you do want to learn more, uh, have a look in many books. There are many, many books out there on medieval pilgrimages. And remember, if you live in Worcester, when the lockdown finishes, go to the cathedral and find out about the Worcester Pilgrim and maybe even try and locate where the shrines of St Oswald and St Wollstone were, two famous saints that Worcester once had. Anyway, as we always say, stay safe, stay in and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.